everyone, how's it going? I'm uh, going to stream some more range of stuff today. Um, it's a nice day in Scotland today, so I'm hoping I can actually get outside later. That would be nice. I can't remember the last time that I spent too much time outside. I should really go on a walk or something. But anyway, um, so last time we implemented um, Enumerate, and today I thought we could try a few other things. So this is what we ended up with on the last stream. We um, we built TL Enumerate, which is a uh, ranges compatible version of Enumerate, which you might be familiar from Python or Rust or, um, or range v3 library. Um, so I'll show you how it's used quickly, just to refresh your memory. So enumerate is used by, you, know, you can take a vector and you can pipe it into TL enumerate, and then that will give you back something which instead of just iterating over all of the items in the range, it'll also give you the index, which is handy. It means you don't have to, to keep track of it yourself. So there's a bunch of other possibilities we could do today. Um, I wrote a few of them here. Cycle, Cartesian product, chunk. Um, I'll also take other requests. I have no idea um, how many we'll get through. Uh, I plan on being here for a couple of hours, so maybe maybe we'll get through one or two, maybe three. Maybe everything will go horribly wrong. But uh, I'm going to start off with with cycle. I think so. If you're not familiar with cycle, let's let's write some tests here in forest. So we can create a cycle.cvp and oh did I update this? I now get proposed CMake changes. Adding this file to add executable. Okay, yeah. Um Do I actually want to do that or is this is done for me? Yeah. I, I don't want to make those CMake changes. I already have this handled because I I glob everything. Okay. So now we want catch two and we'll make a, a test case. Hey, yeah, thanks for the follow, Jessica. Okay, so your test case, test cake. You must be hungry um, for a cycle. So what this one's going to look like is say that we have a hey look so we have a std vector of int with say zero one two oops then what cycle is going to do is going to adapt this vector of just three elements into an infinitely cycling vector so if we do something like for auto ref ref um, item in a piped to TL views cycle. Then if we do, um, if we just do to see out for now item, then the idea is this would infinite loop. You'd get zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. Uh, question in chat, do I think there's a way to implement it, make implementing your own range views more easily with less code in the future? Uh, yes, so if you look at the code for a range v3 library, um, they do something like that. They make it so that you don't have to implement like all of the operators yourself. There's, um, I can probably show you right now. Uh, So if you have a look at range v3, some of their views, oops, not utility, view, um, let's go concat. So for example, they've got this thing like called begin cursor, which um, isn't a ranges thing, but because of machinery that they've built up with, um, just concat view. Yeah. I think this, this view facade will 
implement some machinery which calls this um this begin cursor and then our cursor type has things like next fun and um and distance to and things like that um and here we go next so instead of writing an operator plus plus and then uh um both a prefix and a postfix plus plus operator then they just implement this next and then there's machinery inside the view facade which implements both of them so yes we could go ahead and and write some some machinery to to make the range views easier to write um i'm sure you could do more with meta classes and and all that stuff but this is what we're gonna have for now um so it's just gonna infinitely loop and print zero one two okay I can get started. Cycle.hpp. Um, what changes are you making? I don't think I want... Do I want any changes? I think... I think this is all handled for me. I don't do that. Hey, Benoit. Okay. Now, Cycle, like... I think it's the implementation of it is going to be very similar to enumerate so what i'm going to do in the, the, this is how you you write code you just copy and paste it from stuff you already done and then change enumerate to cycle that's what i'm going to do oh I need to be case sensitive ah. we Don't lock up on me. Come on, I know you can do this. I believe in you. No idea what's up to now. Okay, anyway, let's let's have a look. We also need to change numerate into shouty cycle. I'm pretty sure VS Code does have a case sensitive replace. I don't know why this isn't replacing now. I upset it by holding down the the replace button. Uh, okay. So let's have a look. Um, similar, what do I think of using pragma once? Um, pragma once is, is fine. I just use header guards because I can and there's some, you know, like obscure corner cases where where pragma once doesn't work. I think using pragma once for like most cases is fine. Okay, so our cycle, like I said, is gonna be looping round and round and round. So what our iterator needs to do is um, just match the base iterator going from begin up until end and then when we get to end, then we need to cycle back round to, to begin again. So what does that mean for, first of all, it probably means that we don't need our sentinel type to do anything, right? Like we're never going to, this is going to be an infinite range. We're never going to be comparing equal to the sentinel. Um, the sentinel being the the D marker for the, the end of the range. So whereas for, for enumerate, we did want to keep track of the, the underlying base and iterator so we could compare against it here. I think we, we don't need to do that at all. So I can straight up delete all of our Sentinel implementation and just make it attack like that. Okay. I think this is correct. Um, so now our iterator. So we still need our um, our base iterator because that's what we're going to be marching along um, and then cycling back around. We don't need our um, position type anymore because that's just something for, for enumerate to keep track of. So I can go ahead and delete these. Do, 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 do. 
Okay. That looks fine. That looks fine. All right, our value types. So previously we were returning a stiff pair of the count type and the value type for the underlying iterator. Now we just want to straight up forward all of these traits directly to our base. So our iterator category is going to be the same as the underlying one. Um, that's going to make some trouble for me. I won't make too much trouble when I need to make it random access. I just have to do some, some modulo arithmetic. It should be fine. But uh, yes, yeah, so our iterator category, a reference type, our value type, and our difference type are all just going to be the same as, as whatever range we are, are wrapping. Extra comma on line 48. Thank you. Now a question. Um, I'll, I'll maybe come back to most useful C++ libraries, or people can feel free to drop their favorite C++ libraries for new C++ developers in the chat. I'm gonna gonna keep on going on this. Okay, so our reference type is, I feel like we don't even need to do, we don't even need to cast it to our reference type because we're just straight up dereferencing our, um, our base iterator. This all, okay. So here's our, where we're gonna have to start caring about when we're at the end. So if we increment our, um, this iterator, we need to check if we're at the end of um, the range we're wrapping. And if so, wrap back round to begin. Okay, so where's the best way to capture this? I guess, so like we're currently wrapping our, um, just our base iterator, but we also need to capture the end because inside this iterator, when we plus plus, we need to know if we're at the end um, of this base range. So, guess a couple possibilities when we construct our iterator, when we call begin, we could just pass the end iterator. Uh, what state are we keeping inside here? I'm trying to think what the, the best way to do this is, because we could either like pass um, a pointer back to the cycle view and do it that way, or we could pass in our um, you know, I think our, our best move is probably just to pass a pointer to base because our, our iterators shouldn't outlive our base object, right? Because then they would, would dangle anyway. Um, it means we don't have to hold both the begin and the end inside our iterator. It makes it a little bit smaller. Um, so I think I think we'll do that for now at least. If anyone thinks this is a terrible idea, please let me know. I guess I want to use address of. The difference between std address of and ampersand is you can um, you can overload the the ampersand operator and do terrible terrible things. Whereas address of gives you the address of whatever you give it, regardless of whether the ampersand operator is um, is overloaded or not. Um, or oh, sentinel doesn't even need to be a template anymore. Our sentinel, I think we could just use there. There's something called default sentinel, which we could use. I'm just going to do it this way. I don't know if there's any difference. Uh, I'm just going to return our sentinel. And this shouldn't make a difference. We can get rid of all of these end um, overloads because sentinel is now just a attack type, essentially. OK, so when we construct our iterator, we're going to give it the address of base, which is our base range, and 
then we're going to, instead of storing an iterator here, um, I guess we're, we're going to need to store this anyway, right? Um, so we would need to store this and a pointer to, to base. So let's just, let's just store the sentinel, the end sentinel in here. That would make more sense, I think. Sentinel T for base. End. Okay. So then in here, we're going to take ranges. Ah. Um, Sentinel T for base. So this is the, when you call end on our base range, this is the type which you get. Keep thinking of X-Men when I say Sentinel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and okay, I think I think this is the correct thing to do. Very glad to be proven wrong. So then, instead of passing address of base here, we do std ranges begin of base and std ranges end of base. And do the same here. For those who went around last time, iterator false and iterator true is just whether the iterator is a const iterator or not. Um, just saves us duplicating that code. Okay, so now we pass the begin and end. We capture them here. And now when we increment our, um, our current iterator, we're gonna check if current, whoops, equals and down okay we're gonna need the begin the original begin iterator because we need to get back there so instead of doing this we're just gonna take a pointer to base make it smaller so then when um, we're gonna check if current is um, base arrow uh, no. Stick, check if it stood ranges end of base and if we are at the end then we're gonna set current to std ranges begin of base I think that is correct. Okay, and when we do plus plus int, let's just do um, uh, oh, wait, no. Plus plus operator plus plus. Okay, so now we've got our postfix operator. Sorry, our pre pre increment and our post increment. Uh, we'll need to pass in our base pointer in our constructor here. Address of base. And in our constructor, we're taking a base pointer. And then just assigning that here. Okay. So that's incrementing. Now, that might be enough for getting our basic example to work. These, um, the minus minus iterators, plus equals, so all of this stuff, that's all wrong, but this should be enough um, for our test. Now size, we don't want size functions. Um, Base, yeah, that's fine. 
Um, oh, these need to be cycle view. Now we need to think about what types we allow. Viewable range. Um, that might be enough. No, we need our, our underlying type has to be a forward range. So if you're not familiar with the different types of ranges, So, oh, there's not a nice description. Anyway, an input range means you can just go forward. Um, a forward range means you can go forward, but you can save any iterator along the way and then keep going forward. So you, you can't decrement an iterator and go backwards, but you can save an earlier one and then go forwards. And that's what we need because we, um, because we're essentially going from the start to the end and then start to the end, start to the end. So it needs to be a forward range. It can't just be an input range. Um, and the correct place to put that is probably, yes, here. Instead of an input range, we require this to be a forward range. Okay. Um, count type, we don't even need this anymore. Uh, that's all good. All right. Let's um, hash include tl slash cycle and see what happens. Hoping that module mistake is like silly typos I've made. This is the the required functionality we'd need. Perhaps it could be a di bi-directional range. Yeah, 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 like we could, um, we could allow for a bi-directional range and uh, random access range. So w w when you say this has to be a forward range, you're constraining it to the the minimum, essentially. You're saying that it has to be at least a forward range. It could still be a bi-directional range or a random access range, but you're saying it has to be at least a forward range. Um, can you call vector pushback and place friends? No, don't do that. <laughs> That'll break everything. Um... Okay, I've still got pause kicking around. Just get rid of all of these. Oops. Um, I'm gonna have to fix all of these later anyway if I want to support random access ranges. But for now, I just wanna get this to compile to make sure that our current state is correct. Okay. Um, a semicolon. Yeah, thanks for for joining. Um, was it just that? What happens if I recompile? Cycle is not a member of TL views. Did I? There we go. And to rename these, cycle. Cycle. Let's try that. So one thing to note is that um, we have this alti. This basically says that whenever you construct cycle view, then first it's going to construct a std views all t from whatever you give it. All t is some kind of magic thing which says, hey, if you give me a view, then we're all good. If you give me a container, then I'm going to take a reference to it rather than copying it. And if you give me something else, then maybe I can take a sub range. Um, so it's... 
is something which you can kind of put on the entry point to all of your views to make sure that you handle um, like large types and small types and stuff all in a sensible manner. Um, Non-standard syntax, what have I done? Um, create pointer to member. Anyone seeing what I'm doing wrong here? Hmm. Return iterator true. Std ranges begin of base and std address of base. So I'm just complaining about address of. Oh, is it base underscore? <laughs> yeah, that'll be it. Not the best compiler error. Yes, my iterator type is still a, a concept because you still want it to be const or non-const. This is looking better. Um, oh, this is what we had last time, right? Where we had a um, a bad comparison operator. Although in this case, it might actually be sensible because, right, yeah, like this doesn't make sense anymore. Um, if we compare against a sentinel, we want to turn false. Right, we are never done. Uh, I think that's correct. What were the other comparison operators we had? I think those were all iterators against iterators. Yeah, that looks fine. If I want to learn C++, where do I start? Um, I'd recommend Kate Gregory's Plural Site courses if you like online learning or um, depending on what your existing um, programming experiences, either a tour of C++ by Strewstrup if you're already like, experienced in other languages, or um, programming principles and practices if you're not. Hey, thanks for the follow big. Okay, so that's still not working. Can't compare against um, Sentinel. Let's have a look at this. No operator branch takes left hand of cycle t sentinel. Mm. Oh, there's no acceptable conversion. Could be cycle view iterator. Yes, that means that looks what? I would hope it would call. Um, I'm going to switch to GCC, see if this gives me a better compiler error. Seem to have some issue with my, with my comparison operator. Did I have some constraint on it that it shouldn't have had? Uh, where were we? Operator equals equals. So this is our... Oh, we still have some... I thought I got rid of our Sentinel code. I am confused. Okay, well, I'm gonna get rid of that <laughs> because we don't need it. Because our sin oh, that's an enumerate. .htp. .hpp. I was like, why do I still have this code kicking around? I'm sure that we got rid of it. Okay, let's try that again. No match to, oh, because this is a pointer. Come on, come on. 
yeah, we took a pointer to base, so we need to remember to dereference it in here. Are you going to try and compile for me, please? Yeah, just rebuild. That's more like it. <laughs> okay, Sentinel is not a template, correct. In fact, we don't need that at all. And I need to remember to. No stream. See how this does. This is not hugs. No, this is not hugs. I'm sorry. Okay. Inconsistent begin and end types. In range for statement, cycle view iterator true and cycle view sentinel. Like, yeah, we do have inconsistent begin and end types, but you're allowed to. I don't get this compiler error. Anyway, no match for not equals candidate iterator and iterator but we don't need that one no known conversion for sentinel to iterator it's like we're we have sentinel on the left hand side of the comparison No match for operator not equal. Operand types are the iterator type, whoops, and sentinel type. And then it's saying, why isn't it picking up the sentinel operator equals equals that we had? Disappeared somehow? Something's going very strange. Okay, I changed the wrong file. <laughs> I would explain it. Okay, but we want a comparison between our iterator and Sentinel, and that returns false. going to close this file so I don't get confused again. Okay, that's looking a bit better. Linking. Okay. See what happens. I'm hoping to just get 0, 0120120012. 0, 0, 0, 0, in my in my output window. Can I run this? And then once we've done that we can try and fix this type for uh, bidirectional iterators and random access. And then I think we should be good. There we go. Zero one two zero one two zero one two. Okay, that's working. Very nice. Um, should really make that into a proper catch two test rather than just um, printing out something. So I can say. Um, and i equals zero, and I can say pipe this to std views take, 
and take, I don't know, the first, first 20 numbers from this view and then require that item is equal to i mod 3 plus plus i. Put brackets in here just because people like to be clear. I think that's correct. This i should just go round and round 0, 1, 2 because it's mod 3 and we should take the first 20 numbers so we should this is enough to, to test that we're going around a bunch of times. Okay. Where are these unused parameters? Oh, yeah, we can take away those names since we're not using them. And hopefully we get our tests passing. So now the question is, if you cycle and you go backwards, then should that stop when it hits begin or should it cycle back to end? I'm trying to think. So we already require that your type is a forward range because we require that. If your type is a bi-directional range, yeah, I think this is, a, this is an interesting design choice. What do you all think? Should, if you go back over begin in a bi-directional cycle range, should you end up at end or should you just um, be bound to, to begin? I think it makes sense to cycle around to end. Um, Let's go back to MSVC. I think vote one if you think it should cycle round to the end, vote two if you think it should be stopped at the begin. Seems like you should be able to decrement the same number of times you increment though. Yeah, like if you, yeah, if you increment a hundred times and that cycles, a few times, then you should be able to decrement a hundred times and get back to the same place you ended, which would require cycling back to end. Yeah, I think that's yeah, I think that's the right, um, the right way of looking at this. Uh, so while that's all building, let's have a look. So we've got our plus plus implemented um, and then we need minus minus. I'll just run this, make sure that our tests will pass. Tests, all tests passed, yay. Cool, okay, so we do operator minus minus, then we do minus minus current. And if we are, um, no, if we're going backwards, we need to check first, right? Um, we need to check if we're at begin, if current underscore equals std ranges begin of base, then um, current equals std ranges end of base underscore. Yes, thank you. Uh, and then we decrement current no matter what, because if we were at end, then we need to make sure that we're because end is the, the one past the end iterator, right? It's not the actual end element. So we need to make sure we decrement current. So I think that's correct. Um, 
here we'll do this operator minus minus okay so if we're a random access range then we want to operate modulo the difference the distance between begin and end right i think that's correct like if our if our um container is um is five elements and we um want to go 15 ahead then that shouldn't change the position we're pointing to and if we go 16 ahead then it should only move it once so we need to um to say auto size equals std and that does require us to be a sized range um which i think is okay um Yeah, so the question is, yeah, I think it's okay to require that the range be sized if we're going to be jumping around, which means that we can call std ranges. Is random access sized already? It, it might be. Let's go check. Random access range. So random access range requires that you're bidirectional and your iterators are random access. So um, a random access iterator does require it's a sized sentinel for. So yeah, I think that's okay. Which means that we can call std ranges size on base to get the size. Um, or our diff is x modulo our size. And then we increment current by diff. Is that correct? Is also what happens if you pass a negative number to to plus equals um, do I have to take the absolute value I think we'll stick with this for now um, okay so if you go backwards then we just do the same thing. I think so. Oops. And doing this should be the same as current plus n base underscore. Thank you. Okay. Um, got our operators. Got all of these. Plus operator means taking our a copy of this and then plus equals y. These all look fine. Okay. Let's give this a try. Um, So, test case, um, bidirectional. So what's, what's a good um, example of a bidirectional iterator, um, which isn't random access? Um, a linked list, 
sit list. Okay, so we can make a list of ints. Zero, one, two. Now, if we use a reverse iterator, will that use operator minus minus? I feel like it does. Do we have std ranges reverse a thing? Reverse view? Yes. And is that equivalent to calling minus minus? Uh, feel like where's operator plus plus for this? It's not it's not quite finished yet. Documentation. Whoops, we um oh, we can drive our iterator manually, that's okay. Just to make sure. Um for auto I is zero. Um, so we'll make um, a cycle of A. So this should cycle our list. And then if we take our std ranges, ah, begin of cycle, then we can say require that uh, loop 20, again, just to, for parity with that, that i equals it, um, I mod three equals it and go minus minus it. So this is going to go zero, two, one, zero, two, one. So uh, two minus I. Um, what's my math here? Gonna start off at zero, so uh, this will still go zero, one, two, right? Okay, for now I'm just gonna see at this and make sure that it works. Um, ooh, we're getting an error there. Let's try building. See how we go. Build succeeded. So hoping to see zero two one zero two one. Zero two one zero two one zero two one. Very cool. Um, yeah, that would be, that would be an easy change. Thanks. So now, um, This will be saying zero one two zero one two, and so should this. So that test should pass. And then while that's compiling, we can make a test case for um, 
random access. Just gonna rebuild now, is it? <laughs> what should our random access test be? I guess we can just try jumping around a bunch. Okay, all passed. Very nice. So we stated vector event. Um, Zero, one, two, three. And then we take our cycle and our iterator. Then we should be able to require that um, dereferencing the iterator after incrementing it by four. Whoops. Is zero. Is catch2 going to get annoyed at me because that's too complex an expression to have instead of wire, a require clause? What do we think? Nope, oh, succeeded. And passed. Okay, let's just do a few more bits and pieces jumping around. It plus equals three require that it equals three. Um, oops. And then plus another two. And it should now be one. And then if we subtract one, or subtract four, then it should still be one. If this all passes, then I say that we're we're all good for now. Whoops. Then we can move on to next one. What were the other things I had in mind? What do you think? Cartesian product or chunk? Or anything else? Any any suggestions? of which one we should do next. Cartesian product? Yeah, let's go Cartesian product. Uh, doing the, my operator minus equals is implemented in terms of operator minus, so, uh, or was it? No, it wasn't quite, but, ooh. Okay, so we do have a bug. Cannot seek vector iterator after end. Cannot seek vector iterator after end. What's our call stack? So const iterator and we tried to increment it too much. Um, so current is pointing at three and we tried to, wait, where are we? For this one, we must have just done, this must be failing at plus equals two. So that means that this passed okay. Uh, and then we moved here. which is correct, and, oh, we're not even, oh, right, yes, so the problem, hey, thanks to the follow x dark sea. So the problem is that although we are doing, um, calculating modulo r size, it could still be the case that um, incrementing less than that is gonna push us off the end, right? Um, so even though we're, we're doing the modular, we still need to do a little bit more work. Um, so we, we still need to do this, this check. Uh, 
in case we need to, to wrap around. Um, which we do. Wait, do we do this? Um, so the debug iterator is getting upset at us because we're going too far ahead. So we need to pre-calculate how um, how far we need to go back. Okay, so we need to do a little bit more math here. So the this is our um, this is how far we need to go forward in total from our current position. Then um, if that's larger than the distance between current and end, then we need to wrap around. So um, distance to end is to ranges distance. Is this the right thing? Why not calculate the end position directly? Um, what do you mean? Um, so we can give it current and ranges and of base. That'll give us the distance from now until the end where we do um, like n minus current plus x divided by size. Um, yeah. So that would be um, so our end is here. Right, this is our distance between current and and I guess we're around a max this range, so we could use operator minus, but we can just do it this way. Um, and then Sorry, my brain is getting all confused with maths today. Okay, so we've got our distance to end um, and Sorry, my brain is, is completely gone right now. Um, I think my brain's too much in a rut to fix this on stream right now, um, but we can come back to it later. But anyway, we've got most things sorted out. Um, yeah, the debug iterator checks will complain um, if we go too far. Oh, begin plus the distance to end plus the difference mod size. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, current equals the std ranges begin of base plus the distance to end uh, plus difference uh, could just do plus x mod size brackets around here is this correct Take our beginning point. Oh. Okay, phone call. It's probably spam. Ignore that. Uh, let's see what this does. Failed. 
then on line 34. Okay, so we've obviously got the some of the maths wrong. Um, but I think I'll I'll fix that off stream when I can actually think. <laughs> uh, but apart from that issue, we've got a mostly working cycle iterator. Uh, so anyway, we've got a failing test that, that I can fix later. Let's have a look at Cartesian product. Nope, do not make that change, CMake. Okay, so Cartesian product. Yeah, the cycle range is in the, the operator square brackets is implemented in terms of um, of plus, which is implemented in terms of plus equals. Uh, down here somewhere. Yeah. So as soon as the plus equals and minus equals are correct, then those should all work as well. Okay, so our um, Cartesian product looks something like this. Include catch to catch to HTTP. So say we have um, a few vectors with one, two, three. Say we got three of them. We could just take Cartesian product of ourselves, but we can see if this works. Okay, we could do something like for auto ref ref. Um, so now Cartesian product is going to be returning some kind of tuple, right? So um, I'll just call these IA, IB, IC in TL. Uh, views, actually no, TL Cartesian view A, B, C. So that should give us um, like zero, 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 and zero, zero, one, zero, zero, two, Zero one zero zero one one zero one two zero two so on so on so on. Um, it's the best way to test that. Maybe just write out all of the all the possibilities. Stood vector of stood vector int. So the hope is we get zero zero zero. Um, oops. Zero 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 one zero. Right. One two. One. Two, one, two, and then we get all of that again for the first one being two. Mm -hmm. I think there we go. One more two, then this one. One, two, one, two, one, two, line fifteen. Uh, oh, yep. Thank you. And all of these are twos. And zero, one, two, 
Zero and two. Zero and two. This one. And there. Okay. Those should be our answers. Braces. There we go. Uh, so we can require that, um, st I guess just std tie of i a, i b, i c equals std tie of, um, res i zero res i one and res i two okay so this is what we're hoping to get passing and we want this to work with any number of um, of ranges. Okay. I'm gonna copy paste enumerate so we've got something to start with. It's handy to just have a skeleton to work with when you've got so much boilerplate. Um, enumerate change to using product hmm. there we go and should be Cartesian product view which include All right. So Cartesian product, um, we want to be able to construct it with any number of these. Now, where did concepts end up on this syntax? Does this mean that these can all be different viewable ranges? I cannot remember. Hey, Vos love. So we want to take any number of viewable ranges and then forward them in here. If we pipe our a Cartesian product function into another view, then um, that is going to be We need to capture these, don't we? Um, so we can be callable as a function, or so what? I'm trying to think what the the syntax we want here is. I guess you can construct a. Oh no, that's not. What I want. So you could do like Cartes and product view, um, or you could do like TL views Cartesian product and pipe A into that, um, which means that we take You can think about this later. Fine. Anyway, when we construct a Cartesian product view, then this is going to take any number of views. Mm, where's a constructor? Here we go. So this needs to be a variadic template. Do 
templates are essentially or generics, yeah, and const expers for compile time stuff, yep. Okay, we require that all of these are views. Um, can we do a fold expression here? Require that all of these are views. Okay, so then we need to take to hold a std tuple of bases. Okay. I think that's fine. Right, now when we construct a Cartesian product view, this means that we take these bases and construct bases with all of them. Make sure that we call this bases. Okay. So variadic template is going to take any number of bases and then construct our our tuple with them. Okay. Now, when we call begin, we want to start off with the begin iterators of all of our bases. So this will call the iterator constructor with all the bases. And then our when we call end, our sentinel, I guess our, our iterator will need to know the end of all of the bases as well. So it knows which one to increment. Um, so we're probably going to be passing um, a pointer to ourselves. Probably the easiest thing. Or like we could pass a pointer to the tuple as well, I guess. Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, dress of bases. Don't think we actually need to use address up here because the tuple won't have an overwritten ampersand operator. But um, oh, mentioning concepts instead of type name allows different types. Good, perfect. Thank you. Um, okay. So our iterator constructor. So an iterator is going to need to hold a tuple of the iterators of all of the bases. Um, no. This is going to be a little bit more complicated. So our, we can make this a template. And then say that we need, um, to make something into a base means to add const onto it if we are const. So we can do um, the iterator t of base v's. That should work. I'm going to call this constify. So 
So now we'll have a tuple of the iterators of every v in v's, and they will all be const if we are const. Okay, we don't need this count type. In addition to this tuple, we need a, um, a pointer to the tuple of these pointer bases. I think that's what we're passing, right? Yes. All right, a little bit complicated. Um, our iterator category. Okay, so now what happens if these different iterators are of different categories? All right, is there something in std ring in the iterator header, which will give us the, um, the common type of all the iterators. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Does anyone know if something like this exists? Like I want to give this um, a bunch of iterator tags and I want it to tell me which is the, um, the common category. Surely something like that exists in here. Um, so many things. I stream iterator. Maybe it's in, something in iterator traits or something in ranges. Let's have a look in ranges library. Helper concepts, no. This seems like something which must exist. All right. Well, guess we could try writing one. There must be something in range v3 for this, right? Um, I think Kantan wrote a, a product type. Um, let's see what he has used. Mm. Iterator category. Oh, he's got this detail iter cat thing. Is that the thing that I want? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. I don't really want to look at his code because he, um, I, like, I can't copy anything off his code because he's using a different... Um, license. I don't even really want to look at it much, so that's fine. There's nothing in the standard library which does this. We need to write it ourselves. Now that I know that, we can do that. Um, let's... Oh, we don't need simple view for cycle. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Let's, because we'll probably need this in, in in other ones which we implement. Let's make a common include. Nope, do not add it to there. Mm. 
All right. Thanks, space TL. Okay, so we're gonna have a template which takes a bunch of iterator categories and then tells us which one is the the least specialized. So um, where are all of the different tags? It's in iterators library. Mm -mm. Okay, input forward bidirectional, random, contiguous. So if, what's the, the best way to implement this? Um, probably gonna be doing this recursively. Could make a function, call it f for now which takes are the corresponding concepts for these. Um, there is like input range and things like that. Um, but what we're concerned about is the tag because that's what um, things check. They check iterator tag, like um, iterator traits iterator category to make sure that your that your iterator category is is correct so like if we look at um, forward range <coughs> then this checks that we're in input range and that our iterator type is a forward iterator and that checks that it's derived from stood forward iterator tag. So that's what we need to do right now. Okay, so if we have a category and a bunch of other categories, um, we basically want to take the, um, the most common one of the categories. Um, so I'm trying to think. Basically, our specification for this is you call, let's call this most common iterator category. It's a long name, but it's descriptive. So we call most common iterator category with input iterator tag and forward iterator tag. Then it's going to give you back input iterator tag because it's the most the um, the, the the common iterator tag between the two. So I guess we maybe want to, to compare the first two. Is that right? Um, oh wait, these inherit from each other, don't they? Or do they? I can't remember. Maybe we can just straight up use or abuse um, overload resolution for this. They do. Okay. Um, which means that if we call, okay, we're getting a tag type here. I haven't done this kind of metaprogramming in a while. Um, so bear with me a little bit. So if we take, um, if our first category is input iterator tag, make 
make sure we include iterator. And we have um, a bunch of others. So we call this and the first one is input iterator tag, then the answer is always going to be std input iterator tag because it's the um, the most common. Um, oh, I guess we don't we don't even need this thing because these are empty structs. Okay. So that will Be okay. Now, what happens if you call this and the first type is a forward iterator tag? Then that needs to call for the rest of them, but keep track somehow of the um the forward iterator is the the most common one that we've seen um okay i know we're gonna use a detail namespace it's probably an easier way to do this but i haven't done this kind of overload resolution screwing around in a while and it's kind of fun um Hey, thanks for the follow mystery. Okay, let's make our, our own tag called um, most common. And our main version not in a detail namespace. It's going to take a bunch of categories and then return uh, decal type of most common iterator category um, and the most common one we've seen so far is std contiguous iterator tag. So if we get to the end, and we only have a single tag, then we're going to return that tag. Okay. Um, otherwise, we are going to um, that's fine. Or just call this tag. If you have no idea what I'm doing, that's fine. Neither do I. Um, then now there's got to be a much easier way to do this. Does anyone have any ideas? Like I'm going to end up writing a bunch of overloads here. I don't really want to do that. Um, Like right here, we'd say the most common so far is
forward iterator tag. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of them. Let's require us to define. Um, I'm not sure. You could maybe do something like that. Um, okay, so that would say that our most common so far is forward iterator. Um, now this isn't what I want. Hmm. No. If we take a bunch of categories, we just want to find the one which is um You know, for now, I can just return std. Um, input iterator tag and come back to it later. Like, that's gonna be fine for, for at least getting our initial thing working. Um, anyway, our iterator category is going to be um, TL um, to hash include common. Most common iterator tag of all of the iterator categories from our bases, constify base, no, v's. Okay. We'll make this just a an alias for now. Okay, so now we're saying our iterator category is the most common iterator between all of our base iterators. Our reference is going to be a std tuple of the range references from constify fees and then our value type is going to be the same but getting the value type instead of reference type now what is our difference type going to be um, I guess it's going to be a tuple again. Or does different, I feel like difference type has to be a, an integral type, right? Um, I guess we can keep track of how many um, times we've iterate, we've incremented. Let's make this pointer difference. Oops. Pointer diff t for now. Okay. So when we construct, we're taking our bases pointer. Um, 
and all of our begin iterators, um, the types of which will be a std tuple, and thanks to the follow Chris XF of the, the underscore T naming convention is just, it's a, a type. Um, no, this isn't a std tuple, this is variadic. Um, it is the std iterator, std ranges iterator T for these. think that's right. Um, and that is all of our begins or current. Okay. So now we can, oh, it has to be const of IVs. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't really matter here, but we should do it anyway. No, because we're, we're taking all of the the ones which we're given and then constifying them ourselves. All right, so we take our base pointer. So we can just go ahead and initialize that. Uh, bases. And then our current. Oh, you implemented common iterator category. Very nice. Yeah, feel free to to paste it in chat, uh, paste a gobot link, I can just go straight to it from here. Um, and then current dot dot dot. Okay. Um, just gonna go ahead, go to this gobot link. Come on. Why won't you copy paste? Okay, so Tim Arzovsky in chat has very kindly implemented a potential common iterator category type trait. And if this loads, we can have a look. Okay, so we have a disjunction of if it's the same as input iterator forward by directional random t contiguous. Um, okay, I'm converting it to an int, yeah. Oh, and doing like a sort kind of thing. Okay. Converting tins to find a minimum. Yeah, that seems legit. Um, you could probably, yeah, just finding minimum. In fact, is, is stidmin element um, const expert? is I wonder if you could do this um, with Stidman element uh, what do you need this disjunction for you're saying that T is at least one of these and then uh, converting a category in there and into category, and then just looping over, finding the minimum. Yeah, this might do for our, our needs for now. Can always make improvements later. Um, 
So you called it common iterator category T. So in our Cartesian product, we say Okay, we'll give that a try. Thank you very much. Right, so where were we? We had initialized our iterator, and here we are doing a con const conversion, bases to move, bases current is. Of current. Okay. And base. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So now our operator star. So we want to return a tuple of dereferencing all of our iterators, which we can probably use std apply for std apply hey thanks firefly amazon std apply takes um a function and a tuple and then calls f with all of the the arguments of the tuple which means we could do something like std apply, give it a lambda, auto, whoops, auto ref ref bases. Uh, so this is a variadic pack of all of our bases, and then we can return std make tuple of dereferencing bases dot 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 this could this could work so what we're doing is we're calling we're calling std apply, we're giving it a lambda, which will be called, the arguments here will be all of the elements of this tuple. So all of these will be iterators. Right, yeah, this should be current. So all of these will be our current iterators for all of the different ranges we passed in and we're dereferencing all of them and making uh, this is going to copy isn't it um, this needs to be forward as tuple I think that's it stood forward as tuple basically um, maintains the value category of the thing that you pass it. I'm going to go with that for now. Okay. So now plus plus. Right. So when we increment, we're essentially wanting to get to the next state. So what we do is we Increment the last one. If it's at the end, then we wrap it to begin. Then we go to increment the next one. Right? I think that is correct. Okay, so how do we implement this? Um, we're gonna need a recursive template. 
So I'm going to take std size t n, which my initial value is going to be the last in our tuple, which is going to be size of v's minus 1. So we're going to start at the last element of our tuple. Um, I'm going to call this next. OK. So we're going to get the iterator at n um, is our current std get std get let you get an, the nth element of a tuple. So to get n from currents is going to give us our iterator. We are going to increment the iterator um, then we're going to check if our iterator is the same as std ranges. Yes, the stream will be um, still up on Twitch and I'll also be uploading it to YouTube once I get the captions done. std ranges end of std get end from our bases. I have to dereference this. Um, that's correct, right? We are checking if our the iterator here is equal to the end of this iterator. And if it is, then we're going to call next with n minus 1. And if at some point n equals 0, this is our base case, we're going to return. Now, will that implement a Cartesian product? Let's run it through in our head. So, oops. Right, so if we start off with 0, 0, 0, and all our vectors are 0, 0, 1, what's going to happen? So we're going to call next with n equals 2. That's going to get the tooth element from our currents which points to this. It's going to increment. So this will be 1. Then it's going to do this check on whether the iterator is now equal to the end. Um, then that will fail, so it will return. Next time we call this, it will do this. It's still not at the end. So now, this time it is at the end. So we'll increment it. It's now at the end. So we call next minus one, and you're right. Now we need to, to reset. So now we need to change it to std ranges begin std get n of bases. This will do our reset. So that will reset the last one, and then we call next n minus 1, which will increment this to 1. Should next return something like a bool so that the calling code could know when to stop? Um, generally, you check that from the outside. Like, you could happily call operator plus plus, but if you do it too often, then it's undefined behavior in a lot of cases, right? So you need to be checking it against the end iterator. Um, this looks okay, I think, for now. So when we call plus plus, then we could just call next, and that's going to get the right value. Okay. Um, to next here. Okay. 
gonna pretend all of this doesn't exist for now. Uh, if I don't instantiate it, it should be fine. Um, because I'll, at least I'll, I'll delete this stuff for now. Um, okay, I'll just leave it at that. All right, now equals equals, we need to check if every element of the iterator is equal to all of the others. Should just be, you know, tuples have equality operators, so should just work. Um, we need to make sure that all of the iterators are equality comparable, which is constify v's um, and dot dot dot. It's a fold expression. Should make sure that every iterator type of our bases is equality comparable. Um, these are all going to have to be variadic, which is a pain. Uh, need to make sure that constify vs random access range and dot 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 but these are all random access range i could write like alias helpers for all of these so that i don't have to copy paste for now i'm just going to copy paste because i could get the alias helpers wrong i just want to get something working for now These will need to be currents. So how are we doing now? So we've got an operator star, we've got an operator plus. Those are the two most op most important parts. Um, I can always just try compiling this and see what happens. Oh, we, we need our sentinels, I guess. So our sentinel, because we're already tracking our end iterators, Um, because we already have a pointer to base, we could just use a default sentinel. Um, equally, I think it's probably correct, more correct to, to store our end, um, sentinels in here. So, again, we want, we don't want that base thing, we want constify. Um, and then we need std tuple of std ranges sentinel t constify v's dot dot dot. Okay. And then that should construct our sentinel and here we have our const converting constructor which says that I think line 172 missing closing yes I think yes thanks um, that std ranges sentinel t 
V is convertible to the one of base. Uh, this needs to be variadic. The sentinel type of V's needs to be convertible to the const version and all of them need to be. Is that right? Uh, again. Okay, I think that's right. Jeez. Some of this code gets pretty hairy. Um, Jenny, just gonna make this auto. I'm not working out what that type is. <laughs> Uh, okay, and my equality operator between an iterator and a sentinel is making sure that base is equal to ends, and that should check that all of our um, iterators in the tuple are equal to the, the end iterators. Yeah, is base implemented correctly here? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Wait, where is base implemented for this iterator? Hmm. Oh, here we go. Make this autoconst ref again. You think line 181 has one too many? <laughs> you, you might be right. Um, okay, so like the ID should really be helping me here, but it's <laughs> the, this code is horrible. So. Um, I think this is right. That closes the sentinel T, that closes convertible to. I think it's the correct number, but. Um, okay. Does std tuple have a, a minus operator? I don't imagine that it does. It does not. Um. That. So we'd have to implement this ourselves. I don't want to do that right now. I just want to get the basic thing working and then we can fix things like subtracting. Okay. Um, so this is implementation of, um, oh, you find an issue. Sure, there's a static assert i equals five should be four here. Okay, um, so end is going to return std ranges end of bases dot dot dot. So now If this is a common, if everything is a common range, is uh, and everything is a sized range, then you technically could return the same type. I'm just going to delete this overload. And this is a const version. Yeah, that's fine. that okay um size so size is going to require that everything is a sized range um 
and it's going to return std make tuple of all of these. And this implementation is going to be the same. And this is going to be the same, apart from it will be const. Okay. Base. Oh, I'm just going to ignore these for now. We'll see if they compile or not. <laughs> Let's comment on there for now. Okay. So similarly gonna just gonna comment this stuff out. Whoops. Okay, let's see how many compiler errors I get here. This one's pretty tough. Many, 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 many. Had some leftover code. And oh, it looks like I'm either too many or too few braces here. <laughs> uh, open, open. Close too few, I think. Mm. Try that. Type names did iterator tree. Oh. Simple view. Um, I'm just going to what was simple view again? I can't even remember. So it was an enumerate that oh, the iterator and sentinel types are the same. Like that's a little more difficult for Cartesian range because we've got many of these things kicking around. Um, just gonna say, just gonna remove these. Okay, iterator category, dependent name is not type. Yeah, maybe simple view can be defined in terms of common range. Uh, I cannot work out where. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to get the common iterator category. So I've got the iterator traits of. Oh, I should go there. See how this goes. V identifier not found. Yeah. Um, well, I already kind of wrote this code, didn't I? Oh, that's fine. I can just do it again. Convertible V's convertible to constify V's. And dot dot dot. And. This requires base is copyable. Um, just going to comment these out. I don't think we need. Oh, we do need base because we use it for for our sentinel. Ah. Um, does this even require that? Basis, no, because we're we're gonna return a reference to this. So 
We don't have the requirement. Okay, we're gonna have a lot of these base identifiers not found, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so plus plus requires that it's not a forward range. Okay, and the other one requires that they are forward range. Okay, this requires that they're all bidirectional. This one requires they're all bidirectional. Uh, requires they're all random access. In fact, like a plus op plus equals operator for a Cartesian product, like when would you do that? Are you ever going to need that? You could calculate this. I'm going to remove these. When are you going to be skipping ahead in your Cartesian product view? Doesn't make sense to me. At least I can't think of a a reasonable use case off the top of my head. Therefore, they get deleted until someone makes an issue on GitHub. <laughs> if you give me like a good use case for skipping around in your Cartesian product view, then maybe I'll implement it, but. Oh God, we're missing another, yes. Does that mean we're missing one everywhere? No. Hey Biddle, how's it going? More base undefined behavior, undefined, undefined undeclared identifiers, geez. Um, requires that they're all random access ranges and that they're all three-way comparable. How does that look? That means we need uh, another and here and there. This is, this code is so horrible. <laughs> I will definitely at some point be going back and making helpers to for these variadic things. Pack expansions cannot be used as arguments to non-packed parameters in alias templates. What? Got this in the wrong place. Anachronism used. <laughs> Qualifiers on reference. Oh. I love that. Anachronism used. <laughs> Such a nice compiler error. Um, comment all of these out because we have not implemented them yet. Missing here. Mm. Oh, we don't have a V. Oh, and we also have a simple view. I'm just gonna remove these. this nonsense. Mm. 
Let's go remove this for now. We're definitely getting sloppy in our constraints here, but I can live with it. Feel like slowly getting there. Oh, don't need commas here. Cannot deduce template arguments for Cartesian product view. Should be able to because we made a template deduction guide. So maybe that's just because we had some comp compiler errors. Base underscore bases. Okay, I'm still getting that error. Cannot deduce template arguments. Failed to specialize. Um, oh, because, yeah, our, this is not correct. We take ours. And then we do all T for all of them. If you want to skip a certain prefix, you could calculate how many elements in the Cartesian product you need to skip. You could do that. Yes. Oh, yeah, thanks. No parameter packs available to expand. Um, right, yeah, it's because bases is not a parameter pack. Um, what do we want to do here? Um, we could use did apply again. Or like, actually, you know, we're, we're passing a pointer to bases. We can do this in our, in our iterator constructor. Um, I mean, we'll still need to do something similar. So I guess we can do std apply auto ref ref Bases um, return our iterator is this right? <sighs> so horrible. So horrible. Did implement cycle? Yes, we implemented cycle. Um, mostly, there's a bug we need to work out because my brain couldn't maths, but um, mostly there. Uh, this is going to be the same thing. So this is iterator true. This is sentinel false. Going to make a helper for this. Uh, construct for, just call it that. Construct for T. I'm missing a semicolon before. Yes, thank you.
refrigerator false. And then refrigerator true. Oh, no, because these are going to be different because I need um, end for the sentinel ones. Okay, fine. I'll just copy paste it. I can always clear this stuff up later. It could be a nightmare on compile times as well. Okay, that should work. And then for this, we need something very similar. Am I representing the Cartesian product as cycle iterators? I'm not. You, yeah, you could do that. Um, return. We just want to call std ranges size for bases. Make tuple. think that's it. Okay. Just trying to Okay. Oh, I missed these ones. Am I also missing braces brackets? No. Hopefully get the basic version working in the next 10 minutes and I've got to run no parameter pack. I call these variadic. Okay. So easy to just make typing mistakes in these. And seven eight lacks a dot. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. This cannot be implicitly captured. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Yeah, gonna have to do it here as well. This is where we keep the good code. Oh, hey, that's very few errors. Cannot convert from initializer list. Um, what's going on here? I think it was taking currents. So, oh yeah, maybe it wouldn't capture. Oh, right, yeah, it's because I take address of bases here. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, what's going on here? Function style cast. I feel like this is giving me the error at the wrong place or something. Cannot convert from initialize list to deal Cartesian product view sentinel false. My, where's my sentinel constructor? Ranges T sentinel const of IVs. Um, can switch back to GCC quickly. Something to do with not matching against this constructor. Oh, because I passed base as well. I don't need to pass base pointer. Um, let 
that. Uh, there we go. Also means I don't need to capture this. And don't need it here either. Jeez, oh. Okay, no matching function. Oh, jeez, that's not good. <laughs> look at that. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, if you have enough context per block, you need a, an else, otherwise. Um, that's going to get compiled in, and we'll just recurse. Ooh. I'm a bit busy right now. When are, when are you going to show dinner? In a bit, okay. okay. Just got my kid coming to ask me for food. Um, build succeeded. Okay. Switch back to MSPC. See if this works. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Failed. Rages two, yeah, that would be a good idea. Um, that's a shame. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Sometimes the test is wrong. Let's try again. Still failed. Mm. What are we getting out of this thing? Uh, yeah, Twitch different driven development. Uh. Oops. Ah. Printf Twitch develop driven development. Don't increment I. Yeah, that would help. Build succeeded. Okay, so we haven't implemented the end test properly, but it looked right. Just loop around infinitely when it should finish. I thought the first number was iterating. Um, 
Oh, no, you're right. The first number wouldn't iterate because... Um, we're checking if n equals 0 here and then returning. Um, we need to do the check here instead. Um, if it's um, if n is yeah, if n is greater than zero, then call next. That would work, right? Only ever recurse there. Um, there's also the issue of comparing against end. So when we compare our iterator to the sentinel, which is in our sentinel implementation here, Oh, you think it might be fine because it never got to the end? Yeah, that would make sense. Let's give it a shot. Succeeded? Come on, come on. Aww. Hang a out of bounds error or something. All right. Well, I need to head off because I got stuff, but we're we're pretty close. Um, and I just fix this up sometime the rest of the week and uh, and post a fixed version. But you can see, like, we're getting really close. Um, most of this was like the tuple nonsense but uh yeah thanks for everyone for joining in and uh i will see you all next week might do something a bit different like ranges two is different or we could do something entirely different feel free to to send me your um your suggestions but uh yeah thanks for joining uh see you all